الله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا ثم الصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد All praise and thanks are due to Allah the Almighty the one who sent down the book unto his slave Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and has not placed therein any crookedness. And may the peace and blessings of Allah the Almighty be upon our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was sent to us to take us out from the dark place of Kufr to the light of Islam and from the narrowness of this dunya to the spaciousness of this dunya and the hereafter and from the oppression of false religion to the justice of Islam. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him his family members, his companions, and whoever follow their footsteps to the day of judgment and to proceed, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah the Almighty has mentioned in Surah Ali Imran saying, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا He said, performing Hajj, performing pilgrimage to the sacred house of Allah the Almighty in Mecca, is an obligation that mankind owe to Allah the Almighty. وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ And whoever disbelieve or turn his back away from doing what Allah commanded us to do, then he should know that Allah the Almighty is ghani, the rich, the independent. He is independent from all the creatures. He doesn't need us. We are those who are in need of Allah the Almighty. Everything that you have, it is Allah the Almighty who gave you. And everything that you don't have, it is Allah the Almighty who deprived you from that. So how can you be arrogant from Allah the Almighty when you are the one who is in need of Him? So we ask Allah the Almighty to make us among those who are humble. Amen. This ayah right here is a proof that performing Hajj is mandatory upon every Muslim. And we will mention the conditions that one has to meet in order for Hajj to become mandatory upon him. But the proof for this in the hadith of the Prophet 
is what is narrated by the five scholars of hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ayyuhal nas inna allaha farada alaykum al hajja fahujju That he said, O oh people, indeed, Allah the Almighty has obligated on you to perform hajj, therefore hujju, perform hajj. Go and visit the sacred house of Allah. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this, a man from among the group said, Afi kulli amin ya Rasulallah, are we supposed to perform hajj every year, O Messenger of Allah? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam disliked the question, so the Prophet remained silent. And then again he asked, Afi kulli amin ya Rasulallah, are we obligated to perform hajj every year? And the Prophet again remained silent. Because if the Prophet said perform Hajj, which indicated as long as you perform it, then you have fulfilled the obligation. And then the third time again he said, Afi kulli amin ya Rasulallah. Should we perform Hajj every year? Then the Prophet became angry. And then the Prophet said to him, naam la wajab wala If I was to say yes, it will have become mandatory for you to perform Hajj every year, and you would not have been able to, to fulfill it. That the Prophet said, do not ask unnecessary question, like the previous nations ask unnecessary question. And due to the unnecessary question, Allah the Almighty made their life difficult on them. Like the people of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. When Allah the Almighty commanded them to slaughter a cow, what did they say to Musa? Instead of them going and grab any cow and slaughter, they said to Musa, mahi. Could you ask your Lord to tell us, I mean, what kind of cow exactly does he want us to slaughter? And Musa said, Innaha bakaratun la faridun wa la bikrun awalun bayna thalik fafalu e ma tuhumarun. So he said, the bakara, the cow that you should slaughter is a cow that is not too old and not too young, in between. Therefore, just go ahead and slaughter that. But instead of doing this, they asked again, Udu ulana rabbaka yubayin lana ma launuha. Could you ask your Lord to tell us what color cow does he want us to slaughter? SubhanAllah. So when they asked this question, Allah made it even more difficult. Allah the Almighty said, قُلْ إِنَّهَا بَكَرَةٌ صَفْرَاءُ فَاكِعُنْ إِنْ لَوْنُهَا تَسُرُّ النَّظُرِينَ Say to them to go and slaughter a yellow cow. A cow that is purely what? Yellow. تَسُرُّ النَّظُرِينَ Looking at it pleases the eye. And of course, if I ask you, did any of you ever see a yellow cow in your life? The answer is what? It's no. But there was a yellow cow and they were able to find it. But before they find it, it was very difficult. So the Prophet disliked from his companions to ask unnecessary questions. However, from this hadith, we learn that performing hajj is mandatory on us. And it is only mandatory on us once in our, in our, in our lifetime, in one time in your lifetime. So may the Almighty make us amongst those who will be able to visit his sacred house in Mecca, Amin. What are the conditions that one has to meet in order for Hajj to become mandatory upon him? The first is an Islam. You have to be a, a Muslim. Because if you are not a Muslim, you did not say La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah, which is the condition of your deed being accepted, any act of worship you perform will not be accepted. So you have to be a Muslim first. And number two, sanity, al-aql. You have to be sane. You have to be understand what you are saying and you have to comprehend what you are intending. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, al-naimu hatta yastaykif wal-majnoon hatta yafiq wa as-sabiyu hatta hatta yablu. That the pain is lifted off of three people. Number one, the one who is asleep you are not going to be held accountable even if you miss the prayer. Anything that happened to you while you are asleep, you'll be not, what? you're not gonna be held accountable on that until you wake up. You wake up. The second is al majnoon the one who is insane until he recovers his sanity. And the third is a child until he reaches puberty. So the first condition is al-Islam, the second is al aql sanity, and the third is puberty. If you are not pubescent and you perform hajj, Hajj, your Hajj is valid and your parents will get the reward of the Hajj that you perform but is it mandatory for you to perform Hajj? No. And if you reach puberty, you are still required to perform Hajj as long as you did not perform it after reaching puberty, even if you perform it before reaching puberty because you did not meet the condition of, 
um, obligation. So we ask the Lord Almighty to grant us understanding of the being and in. So the third condition is pubescent, and the fourth is to be financially able and physically able. Because sometimes a person may be financially able, but physically unable. Meaning you have the means to perform Hajj, but you don't have the health and the strength to perform Hajj. Hajj will not be mandatory upon you. And likewise, if you are physically able, you have the strength to perform Hajj, but you don't have the money, the wealth to perform Hajj, because Hajj is about 10, 10,000. I mean, the minimum you have to pay is about 7,000. So if you are blessed with this money and enough to leave behind for your family to cover the necessary things, then Hajj become mandatory upon you. But if you don't, then Allah is not going to hold you accountable for not being able to. But if you are financially able and physically able and you did not perform Hajj and you die upon that, this is when Allah the Almighty will hold you accountable. That's why Saeed ibn Jubayr, he used to have a neighbor and the neighbor has money, but he did not perform Hajj. So Saeed said, if he died upon that, I will not pray his Janazah. Not because he's not a Muslim, but sometimes, you know, the parish predecessors says they are very harsh and stern on people who know what they're supposed to do, but then they choose to do to do otherwise. So based on this, our scholars said, if Allah bless you with wealth and health, you should hasten to free yourself from this obligation, which is the obligation of Hajj that is upon you. That's the reason why our scholars said, if you die, while meeting these conditions, meaning you are strong, you are healthy, you are financially and physically able and did not perform Hajj, then this will remain a debt upon you and it has to be taken from your money that you left behind before it will be distributed to your heirs. So the scholar said, once you are dead, the money is not yours anymore. If they choose to do that, meaning your children choose to do that in order to you know, favor their father, that's okay. But if they did not, they are not going to be held accountable. You are the one who will be held accountable. Except if before your death, you are able to take some money out and say, Fulan, can you perform Hajj on my, on my behalf? And then they do that. Then after you die, whatever you left is going to be to them. So again, this is a debt that you have to pay. A man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, actually it's a woman, who said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, my father died and did not perform Hajj, even though he was able to perform. Can I perform Hajj on his behalf? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her, Hujji and Abiki, meaning perform Hajj on his, on his behalf. And then the Prophet asked her, if your father has a debt, would you pay the debt? She said, yes. Then the Prophet said, then the debt of Allah the Almighty is more worthy of being what? Paid. So if you die, while being able to perform Hajj, this remains a debt on you, and your, your children should pay the debt on your behalf. And I would recommend any obedient child who knows that his dad passed away and did not perform Hajj, if you are able to perform Hajj on their behalf, do it, and this is part of obedience to your parents even after they are, after they are dead. So we ask the Lord Almighty once again to grant us understanding of this religion, Amen. Allah the Almighty has commanded Ibrahim alayhi salat was salam after he built the Kaaba. Allah the Almighty commanded him to announce to the people to come and perform Hajj. So he the Most High mentioned saying, Wa adhim fin nasi bil hajji rijala. Announce to the people to come and perform Hajj. If you do so, yatuke rijala and yatuke al al-aqdam. They will come to you walking on their, on their feet to perform Hajj. وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ أَيْ عَلَى كُلِّ إِبْلٍ مُنْحَنِي مِنْ مَشَكَّةِ السَّفَرِ And they will come to you riding on the backs of every lean cattle due to the fatigue of what traveling. They will come to you مِنْ كُلِّ فَجْنْ عَمِيْ from every deep route, meaning every corner of the world. Why would they come? لِيَشْحَدُوا مَنَافِي عَلَهُمْ So that they will witness the benefits provided for them by their Lord. And so that they will remember the name and mention the name of Allah the Almighty upon what Allah the Almighty provided them with from the beast of cattle. minha. the Messiah said, eat from the beast of the cattle that you slaughter for your sacrificial offering. 
وَأَطْعِمُ الْبَائِسَ الْفَكِيرُ and feed the needy and the poor from it. ثُمَّ لِيَقَدُوا تَفَثَهُمْ and so that they will fulfill their rituals of Hajj. وَلْيُفُوا نُذُورَهُمْ and so that they will fulfill the oath that they make with their Lord. وَلْيَتَّوَّفُوا بِالْبَيْتِ الْعَتِيقِ and so that they will circumambulate the ancient house. And Kaaba is called Bayt al the ancient house because it is the first house, as we mentioned in our previous khutbah, that was placed on the face of the earth. When Ibrahim was commanded to make this announcement, Ibrahim said, Ya Rabb, wa ma yablugu sauti, O my Lord, who would my voice reach? And Allah the Almighty said to him, Al-Din wa alayna al just carry out the responsibility of conveying the message. Just convey the message. And we will announce and we will convey the message. So Ibrahim got on top of mountain of Safa and he called out saying, Oh people, indeed your Lord is inviting you to come and visit his, his house. Therefore answer the invitation of your Lord. The Prophet said when Ibrahim made this announcement, this has reached every corner of the of the world, even those who are yet to born. We ask the Lord Almighty to make us among those who, in His decree, have answered the call of Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam. So, if you answer the call of Ibrahim, then hopefully, inshallah, one day you will witness the house of Allah the Almighty in Mecca. May the Almighty make us among those who witness it. Amen. When Ibrahim conveyed the message, Allah or now made the announcement, Allah conveyed the message. And the promise of Allah the Almighty has been fulfilled. And today we see people coming from every corner of the world to perform pilgrimage in the sacred house of Allah the Almighty. Then if it is said to Ibrahim, a time will come when people will fly across the ocean to come and see Kaaba, he will not comprehend this. But this is the time Allah has fulfilled that and he has granted the children of Adam the means to be able to travel. Because think about it. How can somebody travel from here to, to Mecca? It's going to take us like how many uh, months of traveling over uh, across the ocean to get there and then on the feet. But Allah the Almighty has made it easy. So we thank Allah the Almighty for guiding us to this beautiful religion. Amen. After knowing the conditions of Hajj, what is left for us to know is the months of Hajj and some of the things that are required from us to do when we arrive at Hajj. Allah the Almighty mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah after saying wa atimu al-umrata wal hajja lillah He said al-hajju ashkurun a ma'lumat ay ashkuru al-hajj ashkuru ma'lumat He said the months of hajj are known and we mentioned before the months of hajj the months of hajj are three some people think that the hajja is the only month of hajj the hajja is part of the months of hajj because Hajj is the type of obligation that we call Wajibun Muwassa, meaning it is an obligation that the time frame to fulfill that obligation is Muwassa Min Jari or Mutayyib Min Jari. It is broad from one angle and narrow from the other, meaning you can leave your home to perform Hajj with the intention of performing Hajj from the first day of Shawwal, but you cannot complete the ritual consecration of Hajj until the eighth day of the Hijjah, this is when the actual ritual consecration of Hajj begins. But can you leave your home with the intention of performing Hajj? Yes. How? Because the months of Hajj again are three, Shawwal and Dhul Qa'ada and Dhul Hijjah. These are the three months of Hajj. And there are three forms of Hajj. Number one, Hajj Ifrod. Number two, Hajj Piran. Number three, Hajj uh, uh, Kamatron. Hajj al-Ifrad is when you leave your home with the intention of performing just, just Hajj, without Umar. That is Hajj al-Ifrad. Hajj al -Kiran is when you leave your home with the intention of performing Hajj and Umar together and integrate the intention of Umar and Hajj with, with one intention. Meaning, if you do the ihram of performing Umar, you will not get out of your ihram until you complete your your Hajj. This is what we call Hajj Kiran. And then we have the third, which is Hajj Tamatra'in. And this is when you leave your home with the intention of performing Umrah and Hajj, however, with separate intention. So when you leave and arrive at the uh, Miqat, you will make the intention of performing Umrah. And then with Tamatra'in, 
in a tithe. So once you're done performing your Omer, you can get out of your Ihram. And when you get out of your Ihram, you are free to do what the normal people can do. Meaning you can clip your, your fingernails. You can put on, you know, perfume. You can wear regular clothes. Until the eighth day of the Hijjah, then you proceed to Mina with new intention to start the actual ritual of, of Hajj. And this is the type of Hajj that the Prophet Wasallam recommended because it is the middle between the Hajju Ifrod, which is the one that is too, too easy, and the Hajju Kiran, which is too, too difficult. And the best things, of course, is the one in which moderation is, is adopted. Because if you do Hajju Kiran, meaning if you arrive at Mecca, maybe 10 days before the eighth day of the Hijjah, then you will not be able to get out of your Ihram. And Umrah, it takes you about one to three hours to perform, to perform Umrah. After that, if your Hajj is Kiran, you will still have to maintain your Ihram. You cannot take out of, get yourself out of your Ihram. You cannot use perfume. You cannot, you know, do, you know, do the regular things that the uh, the regular person can do. So again, we ask Allah the Almighty to try this understanding of this religion and in. So here the Most High said, فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجِّ أَيْمَنْ أَلْزَمَ نَفْسَهُ أَدَاءَ فَرِيبَةِ الْحَجِّ فِي هَذِهِ الْأَشْهُرِ بِالنِّيَّةِ قَصْدًا بَابِنًا وَبِالْتَلْبِيَةِ قَوْلًا مَسْمُوعًا وَبِالْإِحْرَامِ فِعْلًا ظَاهِرًا فَلَا رَفَثْ وَلَا فُصُوْقْ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ Whoever obligated on himself to perform Hajj in these months by intending it with his heart and expressing it with his tongue by saying, Allahumma labbayka hajja. If his hajj is hajj ifrod. Or Allahumma labbayka umratan wa hajja. Allah, I answer your uh, invitation to perform umrah and hajj. If the hajj is what? Kiran. Or Allahumma labbayka umratan mutamatti anbiha ilal ilal hajj. If his hajj is what hajju tamatu'in. Then you, if you intend to do that, and then you demonstrate it by wearing the, the ihram. Then he the Messiah said, Fala rafat. Do not engage in flirtation. Do not flirt while you are in your ritual consecration of Hajj. And the reason being is because when you arrive at the haram, intermingling is something that cannot be avoided. So Allah the Almighty is advising us not to engage in flirtation with our tongue or our action. Wala fusuqa and do not engage in fist. And the word fist is al khuruj and ta'a, is to rebel from being obedient. Our noble scholar, Imam al qurtubi said, the word fist here means to insult and to curse. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Sibab al-Muslimi fusuq. Insulting and cursing the Muslim is a fusuq. And Allah said this because you can easily get into fight with somebody while you are at Hajj. Because the, you know, the crowd, cannot be controlled. Somebody may, you know, step on you. The taxi driver may overcharge you. It's just a lot of things that happen there that you can easily curse and get irritated. So Allah the Almighty is saying, do not engage in flirtation. Do not insult or curse. And do not argue while you are in the rituals of, of Hajj. And then he the Messiah said, على اختيار حسن الكلام على الفسق واختيار حسن الأخلاق على السب والشتم واللعن. So Allah the Almighty is saying whatever you do of good, He Allah the Almighty is aware of it. And in this verse, He the Most High is urging us to choose kind words when talking to people instead of cursing and insulting them, and to choose good character when dealing with the people instead of arguing with them and cursing with them. We ask Allah the Almighty to adorn us with good qualities. And me, the Hidam Masai said, And when you travel, make sure that you carry your provisions of Hajj. Do not go to Hajj with something that is not sufficient and then become burden on others. Because before, as our noble scholar Imam al qurtubi said, there are some people who come from Yemen to perform Hajj during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they will not carry enough provision with them. When they were asked, they said, Nahnu mutawakkilun, we depend on Allah. But then when they arrive there, they go around begging people for help. And this is not something that is praiseworthy. So here the Mustai said, what does a wadu? Carry your 
provision with thee when you perform Hajj, then he said, فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ ذَلِكَ التَّقْوَى However, the best provision that one can carry along with him when traveling is the fear of Allah, the Almighty. As we said before, وَإِنَّ مُرُؤٌ لَبِسَ غَيْرَ لِبَاسِ الطُّقَى تَجَرَّدَ أُرْيَانًا وَإِنْ كَانَ if a man adorn himself with any adornment other than the adornment of piety, he will still remain naked, even though he is, he is clothed. So let us adorn ourselves and clothe ourselves with the fear of Allah, the Almighty. Then he the Messiah said, What taquni ya ulil albab? Fear me, O man of understanding. So the more intelligent you are, the more pious you are. But the less intelligent you are, the less pious you are. So we ask Allah the Almighty to make us among the intelligent people who fear the Lord. That is what Hidam Musa said, What taquni, fear me. And he said, Ya ulil, Ya ulil albab, O man of understanding. May the Almighty make us amongst them. Ameen. Aqulu ma tasma'oon. Wa astaghfirullah al-azim ali wa lakum. Wa ta'ibu min al-dhanbi kamal la dhamba lah. Udu'ullah yastajib lakum. Wa astaghfiru yakfir lakum. Alhamdulillah wa kafa thumma salat wa salam ala ibadi ladhi na stafa wa baad Hira Musaidan said Laysa alaykum junahun anta bitabu fadlan wa rabbikum There is no blame on you if you travel to Hajj to seek from the bounty of your Lord And the bounty of your Lord here means buying and selling To do business, to engage in trade in general And the proof of that is the statement of Allah in Surah Al-Jum'ah Ida nudiya li salat min yawm al-Jum'ah and then he said, فَإِذَا قُضِيَةِ الصَّلَةِ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَوَلِ وَبِتَبُوا مِنْ مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ فَسَمَّ التِّجَارَةِ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ Right? So Hina Musa is saying that there is no blame on you when you travel to Hajj. You can carry something from your country that they do not have it there and sell it there. And if you're coming back, you can buy something that they have in, in Mecca and bring it to your country and sell it. There is nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, buying and selling is a praiseworthy thing. The Prophet wasallam said, any man who works hard in order to preserve his honor and preserve the honor of his family by not begging and depending on others, then this is an act of an act of worship. So he the Messiah said, and if you proceed from Arafat, wa Arafat summiya Arafat li anna al hujjaja yata arafuna indaha. Wa kala imam al kurtubi summiya Arafat bi Arafat li anna adam alayhi salat wa salam la ma uh bitok mina sama nazala bihin wa hawa uh nazala bi jidda thumma takabala bi Arafat wa wa ta arafa munak fa summiya Arafat bi Arafat. And the word Arafat is from the derivative of the word al-orf and orf means getting to know one another and they said it is named arafat because the hujjahs meet there and they get to know one another that's why the fact that they came from different countries and our noble scholar imam al-kutubi also said arafat is named arafat because when adam was kicked out of jannah he descended in india and hawa descended in jeddah and both of them ended up meeting with one another, with each other at Arafat. And they get to know each other after a long period of what? Separation. This is the reason why the place Arafat is called Arafat. And the virtue of Arafat is known. And inshallah, in our next khutbah, our noble brother Sheikh Qasim will address some of the virtue of Arafat in our next khutbah, inshallah. So Arafat, leave us with the Afatum in Arafat. If you proceed from Arafat, Fathkurullah in the Mash'ari. Haram. Remember Allah the Almighty by the Mash'ar al-Haram. The Mash'ar al-Haram is Muzdalifa. And Muzdalifa is where the Hujjaj gathered after leaving Arafat and they spent the night there. And they call it Laylatul Jama'ah, the night of Allah. Kama hadakum. Just as He, Allah the Almighty, guided you to this beautiful place to do is when they perform Hajj before Islam, what do they do? They used to say, if you the lake, the Kaaba naked. They don't wear anything. 
And they used to say, Labbayka Allahumma Labbayk. Labbayka la sharika laka illa sharika tamlikuhu wa ma malak. And they will say, Labbayka Allahumma Labbayk. Here we are, O oh Allah, we answer your invitation. Here we are testifying that there is no partner with you except a partner that you owe. But that does not own anything. Meaning, even if you have a partner, it's a partner that you possess and they don't possess anything. The reason why they said this is because they know that the associate partner is with, with Allah. And then Islam came. Then the Prophet said, لا يطوفوا حول الكعبة أريانا No one should circumambulate the Kaaba naked. And that practice has been what? Ended. And then he also called them to Tawheed to single out their Lord along with worship. So he the Messiah said, Remember Allah and be grateful to Him for guiding you. When in to when before the coming of the Prophet وسلم, all of you upon were upon guide misguidance. May the Almighty guide us to the straight path. Amen. And then he the also said, Thumma afidu min and then proceed to where the people proceed to, and that is to Jamarat, to go and stone the devil. Then Allah said, if you finish your ritual of Hajj, then remember Allah like the way you remember your forefathers, or even more than more than that. And if you think about it, all the rituals of Hajj, you will hear Hidam Sai saying, remember Allah, which indicate the importance of remembering Allah. So Hajj and the act of worship in general is established for the purpose of remembering who? Allah. Prayer is established for the purpose of remembering Allah. Because when you leave your home and come to the masjid, it's because you remember who? Allah. This is the reason why he the Most High said to Musa alayhi salatu wa salam wa aqimi salata li Establish the prayer in order to remember me. And he the Most High also said in Surah Al-Jum'ah, فَإِذَا فُقِذَا نُودِيَ لِسْسَلَاتِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ فَاسْأَوْ إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ when the call to prayer is made on Friday, hasten to the remembrance of Allah the Almighty. So everything that we do, any act of worship that we do, we do it for the sake of Allah. Whether we understand the goal behind it, the purpose behind it or not. So he, Allah the Almighty, said to the slave, leave your home and come and visit my home. The slave said, Labayka, Allahumma eh, Labayk. He said, take off your comfortable garment and put on the ihram on you, which is very uncomfortable. The slave said, I heard and I obey. Allah said, do not put on perfume or clip your nails or shave your head. The slave said, I heard and I, I obey. Allah said, you mumbled the Kaaba seven times. I heard and I obey. Kiss the black stone. I heard and I obey. Pace between Safa and Marwa. I heard and I obey. Shave your head. I heard and I obey. Stone the devil. I heard and I, I obey. Slaughter, I heard and I obey. Do you understand everything that you do? No. But this indicates absolute submission to Allah the Almighty. That is why we, the Muslims, when we are commanded to do anything, we don't ask why. All that you have to do what? We heard and we, we obey. You don't have to know the wisdom behind anything. Now we come across people rejecting the verses of the Quran because they believe that it doesn't make sense to them. If you couldn't comprehend anything from the Quran, you have to accuse your intellect with deficiency. But do not accuse the book of Allah the Almighty with deficiency because we have limitation. There are things in this world that we cannot understand. When the Prophet ﷺ talk about on the day of judgment that the star will brought closer to our heads within the distance of mouth, some people are like, how is this possible? But if Allah the Almighty said it will happen, it will happen. How is it going to be? It's beyond our imagination. All that we have to do is we heard and we, we obey. Allah the Almighty, if you die, the Prophet said there is a punishment of the grave. So Muslims say, okay, we bury him, we open, we see him like that. We don't see any punishment. So we don't believe that there is a punishment of grave. Why? Because they don't comprehend. But if you're going to use your, like your, 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 your intellect, that is deficient, to try to judge the book of Allah the Almighty, then you will go, go astray. So again, we ask Allah the Almighty to guide us to the straight path. Amen.
Allahumma zidna wa la tawqusna wa akrimna wa la tuhinna wa a'thimna wa la tu'thir alayna Allahumma j'alna laka shakkarin laka dhakkarin laka mutawain wa ilayka awwabina munibin Allahumma kfir li abadina wa umahatina Allahumma kfir li abadina wa umahatina Allahumma ihda awladina Allahumma ihda awladana Allahumma ihda awladana Allahumma hafadhu min fitnati hadha zaman Allahumma hafadhu min fitnati hadha zaman Allahumma anqidhu min fitnati hadha zaman Nurahmatik ya rahman rahimin Wa ya rabbal alamin Wa salli Allahumma ala sayyidina muhammadin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman kathira Wa salli Allahumma ala sayyidina muhammadin الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا للصلاة هيا للفلاي كذا قامت الصلاة كذا قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سو مستقيم عتيم متواصل استرحم كلما الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الحج أشهر معلومات فمن فرض فيهن الحج فلا رفث ولا فسوق ولا جدال في الحج وما تفعلوا من خير يعلمه الله وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى واتقون يا أولي الألباب ليس عليكم جناح أن تبتغوا فضلا من ربكم فإذا أفضتم من عرفات فاذكروا الله عند المشعر الحرام واذكروه كما هداكم وإن كنتم من قبله لمن الضالين ثم أفيضوا من حيث أفاض الناس واستغفروا الله إن الله غفور رحيم الله يا الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين فإذا قضي 
أنتم مناسككم فاذكروا الله كذكركم آباءكم أو أشد ذكرا فمن الناس من يقول ربنا آتنا في الدنيا وما له في الآخرة من خلاق ومنهم من يقول ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقيل عذاب النار أولئك لهم نصيب مما كسبوا والله سريع الحساب الله أكبر يا الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله